Many of you may have heard of H. pylori as something bad for your stomach, a bad bacteria for your stomach, but did you know it can affect your risk for Alzheimer's or Parkinson's? It can cause hives, it can cause throat problems, it can cause psoriasis and rosacea. So there's a lot of links with H. pylori that we don't think about. So today we're going to talk about the hidden facts of H. pylori and the hidden symptoms and go into how you can treat your H. pylori. I help hundreds of patients on my data, in my day-to-day -day practice in functional medicine help heal their gut. And that is part of what we're talking about today because we are talking about H. pylori, which I find in so many tests that I do on patients. And they don't always have the most classic symptoms of H. pylori. So first, let's talk about what H. pylori is. So H. pylori is Helicobacter pylori. It's a bacteria we can find in more than 50% of the population actually have it, but not all of us have symptoms of it but in our mouths and in our stomachs and in our intestines. And it is classically known to produce symptoms of reflux and ulcers and gastritis where our stomach lining gets inflamed, but it can do more than that. And we often don't talk about that as physicians. We're not talking about that. We're thinking about it in the more classical sense of, do you have an ulcer or do you have gastritis? Okay, you probably don't have H. pylori. Well, that's not necessarily true. If you dig deeper into some of the research, it can cause some other symptoms. So the classic symptoms, like I said, can be abdominal pain, reflux, so kind of that acid heartburn feeling, um, sometimes a throat heartburn feeling. Um, you can also have some nausea, vomiting, bloating, gas, diarrhea. Those are more classic symptoms. So the hidden ones and the hidden facts about H. pylori are that it can cause not only the stomach cancers, but it can cause lymphoma and colorectal cancer, rectal in the colon. So there's some really serious things that can be linked to H. pylori. Also, like I said, rosacea can be a problem. If you have unexplained hives, maybe it's H. pylori. Glaucoma, it can be linked to. They've even cultured it out of ear infections in children and, and adults. Um, it can, like I said, have a link to Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, which is you know, a, a disease, disease is that it's hard to trace things back to, and it's hard to do those retroactive kind of or retro studies, you know, where you look back. But it has been found in higher amounts with in some studies, and those are small and not proven as much as the other things I'm talking about. But with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, there have been some links there. Also, iron deficiency anemia. So if you're anemic, potentially related to H. pylori and potentially related to absorption issues, um, something called ITP, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, and that's where platelets get destroyed. And then you can also have easy bruising. So if you're bruising easily and ITP has been diagnosed, potentially it's related to H. pylori. So there are a lot of different things. Also COPD in non-smokers. Now COPD is a lung disease that's more common in smokers. But there's some people with, that are non-smokers and you're like, why, why is this happening? So potentially H. pylori might be at the heart of that. So it's a good thing to test for. Now let's talk about how do we test for it. It is a test that you can get through. You know, I talk in my channel a lot about the microbiome testing where we do the, the stool testing and we look for all different kinds of bacteria. So you can get it through that with through your alternative healthcare provider or functional medicine provider. But you can also get H. pylori through your regular doctor. You can tell them you're worried about it. They can run a test through in the U.S., like either LabCorp or Quest. And the most accurate way to do it is through a stool sample. So you will have to collect your poop um, to do it. But they also have blood testing. But if your doctor tries to do that, that I would, they probably know that's not the most accurate way to do it. And then there's H. pylori breath tests where you breathe into like a bag. And, and that's second to the poop, the poop or the bowel movement stool test, but you can do that as well. And the, the blood test is the least accurate. So that's one way you can find out if you do have H. pylori. Now, the test that I use in my practice, because I'm functional medicine, um, is called GI map, and they detect more uh, smaller levels of it versus the conventional test. And sometimes I find those smaller levels can even be symptomatic for patients. And when we fix that, then they do feel better. Um, and they also, on this test, test for the virulent strains. So these are the strains that would cause the most significant disease and potentially cause the cancer-causing disease. So that's why I like that test. But that's not something you get through traditional medical practice. 
So what can we do if we find out we have H. pylori? Well, in traditional practice, we use antibiotics. So we use quadruple therapy. That includes, you know, your kind of like one of the ingredients of your Pepto-Bismol, your bismuth. It includes a proton pump inhibitor, so an acid blocker. It includes a tetracycline and another antibiotic. But tetracycline is an antibiotic as well, but it is not easily found anymore. It's very expensive for some reason, even though it's been around a long time. And it has some some risky side effects, so that's not my favorite. I, I tend to choose natural options, which we're going to discuss next. Stumbling on what's in them, I will use them if somebody's really resistant to the natural treatments or you know just didn't respond well to the natural treatments. But my favorite treatments are some things that might even be in your medicine cabinet. Now, granted, they usually don't work one, just one thing on its own. You need to combine some of these. And so that's why I'm going to list some of my favorite blends that I use as well. But first, in the comments down below, tell me if you've ever been treated, especially with those more conventional treatments, if that's worked for your H. pylori, if you used anything natural for H. pylori, or if you think you might be struggling with H. pylori. So some things that can help are probiotics. Definitely, t if you're going to take those other antibiotics we discussed, um, you want to use a probiotic either during, you don't take it at the exact same time as the antibiotic, you separate it by a couple hours, but either during or after to help eradicate or kill off that H. pylori even more so than just w without the probiotics. And the studies have proven and backed that up. Green tea, something that's just, essential in my life. I drink it all day long. Um, that is beneficial for killing H. pylori, but again, it probably would be used in a combination with some of these other things I'm going to mention. Raw or Manuka honey can actually be beneficial for a lot of different bacteria. I have a whole video on that, and that um, can help kill off H. pylori as well. Um, olive oil can kill off H. pylori. I wouldn't like just down olive oil, but there are some supplemental forms of olive oil. But my favorites are deglycerized licorice. So that's a certain type of licorice where they take out, they modify it so that it doesn't cause high blood pressure, which straight up licorice can. Um, mastic gum. I also like zinc carnosine. So some of the blends that I use have some of these things in them. And I will link these in affiliate links down below. So one of them is um, called Pylori X that does have that mastic gum and the licorice. It also has marshmallow and um, slippery elm in it, which I've talked about the benefits of repairing your gut lining for that, but they also soothe the inflammation that H. pylori can cause and the inflammatory symptoms. Um, they, this one, the pylori plex has regular licorice in there. So if you have high blood pressure, I would recommend not choosing that type and moving on to maybe a different blend with DGL in it. So one other one I like by Thorne is called Peptigard. And Peptigard has um, the DGL in there. It has bismuth, which is in Pepto-Bismol in there. And that is beneficial for treating H. pylori. And it has berberine, one of my favorite herbal kind of antibiotics that I use. It's really, really good for a lot of different things. So those are my a couple of my favorite blends, along with adding zinc carnosine to those. So I'll put ideas for that down below. So tell me in the comments if you've struggled with H. pylori, maybe what has helped you because we all learn from each other. I also have a live webinar coming up about the health top five signs of a healthy gut. So how do we know what a healthy gut looks like? That's what we're going to talk about and how we get there. And then if you want to book a call to work with myself and my team, um, you'll book a call to talk with my team, but I am running the course. It's called Trust Your Gut. And it's a five-phase course. It covers uh, about, you could do it in about six or eight weeks, but um, you can also do it at your own pace. It's all online and it helps you heal your gut with, through all the phases, you can't just heal your gut using one of these steps you have to do. And you, sometimes you can't just heal it using these supplements. You have to do multiple steps, including some dietary change. And we walk you through that. We individualize it for you. We have a whole support system and it's a lifetime membership. So whenever I update the course, you're always going to get those updates and you always participate in coaching or, you know, I have to, but the benefit is you can participate in coaching calls once a week with myself and my health coach, Jess. And we walk you through, you know, ways to heal your gut, how, what thing, what might be working for you um, and what might not be working for you. We, in conjunction with your doctor, of course, help guide that decision making process and coach you through all the steps that can heal your gut. So you have the whole course, but you also have the coaching calls and you have the lifetime membership. And we have a mighty network where we ask questions to each other. We have 
live chats. We have um, all kinds of recipes and lifestyle change and exercise stuff in there that is all about gut health too. So join us on an exploratory call in the link down below. Join me for my webinar and please help this mission keep going to reclaim your gut health by sharing this with others, subscribing, liking, and helping to keep the channel going. And I'm Dr. Shelley Marr. I'll see you next week.